Um, and I, I want to make sure that you understand that this is not something that is just useful for this class. So I'm not doing this just for us because if it were just for chemistry, I would just say something similar to what we said at the beginning of the year. And everybody around your answers to three digits every single time. But you probably came across a time where either you were getting help from someone else or maybe you were looking online and trying to figure out answers and you came up with a different answer than what was written. And maybe something, a message, like on WebAssign said, your significant figures are incorrect. Okay, yes, have you seen that before? And you're wondering, what does this mean? What are these significant digits and how does this work? It's not just for this class. Where you would find this again is in something like architecture, in something like engineering. So whether you're doing like chemical engineering or engineering in general, and in physics, especially in physics, where you're talking about velocity and you are dealing with um, you know, cars and things like that as well, or dropping uh, uh, different objects, it will make a difference on your measurements, on how you measured something. I want first to tell you that it, this is only for measurements, not when you're counting things, okay? So this is a very important topic in science whenever you're dealing with measurements. I want you to circle the word measurements three or four times, maybe five, okay? It's really important that you understand that this is only for measurements. The topic is of significant figures or significant digits, and they're also called sig figs. The sig figs are all of the numbers, all of the numbers or digits, all of the numbers precisely known, I'm going to put in parentheses in a measurement, okay? We're not going to say in a measurement, but it really is in a measurement. It has to be a measured value. Plus one in all caps. What do we say you have to have one digit or one number that is what? Starts with an E. Everybody, estimated. Nice. One estimated, and I'm writing it in all caps, number or digit. Doesn't matter. Number or digit. So let's repeat this. Everybody's going to repeat after me. The significant digits are? The significant digits. Ready? Here we go. All, say with me, all of the numbers precisely known plus one estimated digit. So sig figs are only used when you're measuring something, though. If you count something, for example, if we counted that there are 10 desks, you don't use sig figs because it's exactly 10, and if I wanted to say 10.000000, be repeating forever, okay? I've got exactly 10 desks, for example. But let's say that I had a cabinet, and I was at the store, and I have a certain uh, uh, amount of space that this cabinet needs to go in. So I call home, and I'm like, hey, tell my son, hey, Kaden, uh, I need you to go and measure that space, that open space, because I'm trying to buy this cabinet and I need to know exactly what this open space is. And so he comes back on the phone and he's like, yeah, yeah, uh, it's um, about two meters. And I'm like, no, I don't want to know if it's two meters. I want to know exactly what it is. And there have been people that have made mistakes that have been very costly, including my sister-in-law. She actually, and it's not her fault, there, she had a builder come in and he was building her daughter's room and it was one of those custom builds of like the bedroom. And so he measured, but apparently measured wrong because once he brought this custom bedroom in that you can't change anymore, it didn't fit. They actually had to cut down one of the walls in her room so that it could fit. So one of the walls, it actually cut off, it just, the whole thing wasn't fitting. So it's important that you get your significant digits right and that you measure to a certain point. And based on your instrument, the coolest thing about it is I, I don't have to say, hey, what kind of instrument did you use? Because if you use a ruler that goes to the tens, you're going to list to the ones. And if you have a ruler that goes to the ones, you're going to go to the tens. tens. And if you have a ruler that goes to the tens, you're going to go to the hundreds. hundreds. And it's understood, not just by scientists, but it's understood Across the world, anyone who's doing any type of architecture, any type of medicine, any type of recording of volumes, pharmaceuticals, any of that stuff, that the number that you reported, the last number that you reported, was the number that was, it starts with an E, what? Estimated. And so what you're doing is, you're telling the person how expensive your instrument was. So instead of saying, you know what, mom, um, I, I kind of know what a meter stick looks like, so I just kind of estimated and said it looks like it's about two meters high. That's not what I want. 
I want you to take what type of instrument are you taking and how good is your ruler? Because if you take this and you start measuring, that's not going to be very good either, okay? So what happens is instead of having to say, you know what, I used an instrument, my scale that I used went to the hundreds place, you don't have to say that. You would just report to the hundreds place, okay? Or, you, or if your scale goes to, let's say, now depending on whether it's electronic or not, you know, if you put something on electronic balance, sometimes it wavers and people will say, Mrs. Mel, I don't know, is it 2.65? Because it keeps changing. It's saying 2.65 and then it says 2.66 and then it says 2.64. Why is that happening? Because that last number is estimated, okay? But on another scale, it may actually be the ones place that's estimated. Because people will say, so you always estimate to the tenths place? No, it depends on your instrument, okay? You always go one beyond what your instrument gives you. Is that clear? That's good? Okay. So, it says the significant figures are infinite if you're counting something, but if you're measuring the height of a cabinet to be two meters, you can get a better instrument and then measure more exact and say maybe it's 2.15 meters. And then that way you don't make the mistake of having to cut off part of your wall or having to return something and then pay all the shipping fees and everything else that goes along with that. So let's talk sig figs. I have four rules listed here. We're really going to minimize it and get it down to two. The first thing is any non-zero number is significant. What are the non-zero numbers? One, one, one to nine. Six, seven, one to nine. Everything else. So let's start this off here. Three, two, seven, nine has four sig figs. Every single number here is significant. This last one that's listed is called the number that is, starts with an E, estimated. estimated. That's your estimated one, which means, let's go down. It may not be 3279, it may be 3278 Eight. or 77 or 76. Let's go up. It might actually also go up to 3280 or 81 or 82. So what happens is we have a range of uncertainty where we're not exactly sure. And when the last number that you list is the one that you're uncertain of. Okay? Okay? So 24.7. It doesn't matter if there's a decimal or not. How many significant figures? How many of these numbers are one to nine? Three. Three. Perfect. Let's do the next one. How many significant figures here? Two. Two. How about here? This is a tricky one. Four. Perfect. Have you seen this number? Would it be okay to write it as 0 .7432? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So either one is right. That zero doesn't actually matter. The one that comes before the decimal doesn't matter. And I'll talk to you about that in one second. So that number is one to nine, which means the only number that's in question is zero. Zero is the only number that could possibly be insignificant. Okay, what's the one number that's in question here? Zero. zero, okay? Zero can be in different positions in a number, and sometimes a zero is significant and sometimes it's not. So let's go through these rules and then we're gonna bring it down to two rules. All right, so let's talk about the trapped zeros. Trapped zeros are trapped between any number one to nine, okay? So if you look here, whether or not there's a decimal, these zeros are trapped between a five and a seven, and that makes them significant, so that's four. Let's start at the back of the room, the back corner, and then you're gonna just, um, we'll just keep moving up. So what do you think on this one, how many numbers are significant? Three. Plus the one in the middle is four. It's trapped, so that makes it four. Let's do the next one. What about this one? Three. Three, perfect, that one's trapped. Next one? Four, awesome, that one's trapped. This one, again, you don't really need in that number. It's still the same number whether or not you have that. Okay, let's come to the next rule. So that's the trap zero rule. The next one says ending zeros. Ending zeros may or may not be significant. What it depends on, and this is really the hardest one, is ending zeros. What it depends on is whether or not there's a decimal point. If they're at the end of a number and there is a decimal point, that makes them significant. Let me explain this. I could have written $400, I could have 400 with a decimal point, I could have, by the way, dollars are easier uh, to understand. I always switch to dollars, even with my kids, if there's a decimal involved, I always tell them to think dollars, especially for rounding, it really will help, okay, if you think about money, because sometimes people will round um, 897, they'll round to nine. And then I say, let's make this dollars. And my kids will go, 897? I didn't just round to $9, did I? No, I, you didn't, okay? I mean, it's wrong, right? 
So what would 897 round to? 900, okay? Just to make sure that you're aware of that. So think dollars, that way you're not changing your value. So to you, these may, these may all seem to be the same. 400, 400, 400. How much money do you have? $400. To me, every single one of these is different. If you talk to anyone who has learned significant figures, these are not the same, okay? These are all different. If you report that you have $400, what that means to me is you don't know if you have $400, you may have $500, you may have $600, or let's come back the other way, you may also have $300. You're estimating this four, okay? That's your estimated digit. If you write it this way, what happens if you write it this way is by putting the decimal in there, you've added a little more energy to put that decimal in there, it makes this zero your estimated number. What do we call that in dollars? We call those the, well, what place is that? The ones, right? The singles are the ones. Those are called the ones, right? So in this case here, you do know that you have $400, but you're not sure if you have 401, 402, 403. Maybe let's come back the other way. What would it be? 399, 398, 397. You're within dollars of knowing how much money you have. So if I said, how much money do you have, and you said 400, you're giving me an estimate, estimated four right there. Here you're giving me an estimate in your dollars. So somebody guess, if you roll $400 this way, meaning you put extra time and extra effort into not only putting a decimal in, but also into putting two more zeros at the end, well, how is that difference? There's, well, the, the rounded number is the last zero. Perfect. This is your estimated number. What place is that if you're talking about money? In well, money, that would mean that you're actually estimating your number of pennies. Perfect. You don't know your pennies. So what this means is you have exactly $400. If you're like my kids, my kids count their change. They're like, Mom, I have $56.30. I'm like, what about the pennies? I don't count the pennies. Okay, so they estimate down to like the dimes, right? So here, you're actually estimating down to the pennies where you're not sure it could be $400 in one cent or two cents or three cents or come back the other way, okay? So I wanna make sure that you understand that you don't have to tell someone. As long as you write it this way, you don't have to explain because then the question would be, if I said, hey, Jimmy, um, how much money do you have? And Jimmy says, uh, I have $400. Do you have exactly $400 or do you have $400, but maybe it's $500, maybe it's $300. You don't have to ask the person that. If they report it this way, that means they're not exactly sure to the hundreds, but if they report it this way, they're like, yeah, I know to my pennies how much money I have. So I'm not sure of my pennies, but I can get down to my dimes. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So let's try this now. If they report a decimal point and a zero, that actually means that they are telling you that they are rounding this here in the dimes in this case would be your estimated number. Because the question is, if this were dollars, why wouldn't they just write 100? Yes, would you agree? Why wouldn't they just write 100? They're the same. The difference is they actually measured and estimated down to the dimes here. So next person, okay, so we're coming up. So how many sig figs here? So the rule is, if there's a decimal, the zeros at the end are significant. So how many sig figs are there then? Three. Perfect. Awesome. Again, if there's a decimal, all the zeros that come after your numbers one to nine are significant. So how many in this one? Five. Perfect. And last one, again, if there's a decimal, they're all significant. So how many in this one? Five. Okay. If I wrote a number like this, let's just add one more in, let's call this D. If I had a number that looked like 5,200, and I don't have a decimal there. How many sig figs, everybody, would this one be? Two. Two. If there is no decimal, this is the number that I'm estimating. That's my estimated digit right there. So if there is no decimal, that would be two sig figs, okay? So if we came back up here, by the way, this here would be one sig fig because that's the only one that's listed. How many would this be? The decimal makes those significant, so how many would this be? Three. And the decimal makes those significant, so how many would be this be? Five. Perfect. Last rule. It's the easiest one. 
leading zeros, meaning zeros on the left, are never, ever, ever significant. There is never an exception. If they start your number, if your number starts with zeros, those zeros do not count. The reason why is you can actually switch into scientific notation and get rid of them, okay? So let me give you another example that doesn't even make sense. Would you ever rate a number like this, 140? Would you ever rate 140 that way? No. no. So those would never, ever count. That doesn't count, okay? Any zeros that start your number off are insignificant. Let's talk scientific notation real quick, okay? To properly write in scientific notation, you're going to loop your decimal. I call it the loop rule. You're going to loop your decimal in the direction until you get a number between 1 and 9 to the left of your decimal. The number cannot be higher than 9, and the number cannot be lower than 1, okay, to the left of your decimal. So I'm going to loop, and I'm going to take this decimal, and I'm going to loop once. Well, I have a 0 to the left, so that's not good. I'm going to loop again. I still have a 0 to the left. That's not enough. I'm going to loop one more time, and now I have a 4 to the left. Again, that number has to be a 1 to 9. That's to the left of your decimal. Then when you write this, you're going to write 4 times 10, and however many loops is your exponent, but if the number is smaller than 1, it's not positive, it's actually negative. negative. So this would be 4 times 10 to the negative 3. So that negative actually indicates that your number is smaller than 1. Okay, That's what that indicates. So this only has one sig fig, and if you write it in scientific notation, it confirms it. All right? So let's try this one. We're going to write it in scientific notation after. Okay, so next person. Um, how many sig figs? Well, the leading zeros do not count, so how many sig figs are there? Two. Two. Let's switch it into scientific notation just to confirm. I'm going to take my decimal, and I'm going to go one, two, three. Everybody do this, okay? That way you're practicing scientific notation. I still have a zero to the left. I have to go one more. What if I go one more? What's wrong with going one more over? Yeah, then it's 56. Your number to the left has to be between 1 and 9. So it can't be 56. It, has, it can be a 5. 5 is fine. So now I'm going to write 5.6 times 10. How many loops was that? 4, but it's smaller than 1, so it's negative, negative 4. four. Awesome. Let's try the next one. Okay, so next person in the front here. How many sig figs? The leading ones don't count, so that would be 2. Let's confirm it. 1, 2, 3 to the right. So I've got 3.2 times 10. I loop 3. What is it, positive or negative? Negative 3. Okay, and last one, last person. So that's two sig figs. Um, this is the hardest one. 4. 4. Awesome. Okay, he's right. And a whole bunch of you are probably questioning this. First thing is, these two zeros don't count. Because if I put it in scientific notation, I'm going to go 4.300 times 10 to the negative 2. Whoever it was that wrote this down, why wouldn't they have just written 0 0.043? Well, 0 0.043 is the same thing as 0 0.043. Why didn't they just write 0 0.043? They're saying that this would be the three is the estimate, but in this one, which one's estimated? The zero. You know how sometimes when you measure something and you actually get right on the point zero zero line? Has that ever happened to you? Where you're right on the line? Yes? And you're like, it just happens to be point zero zero. What you're doing is you're still telling the person by adding those zeros in that that's where your scale or your ballot, your whatever it is, your um, instrument that you're using to measure, that's how far it's going. Okay, That's it for the rules, so let's try these. Flip to the back, and let's try these out. So we're going to keep going. Okay, so next person. Oh, write this down. Not significant zeros. There are two situations when zeros are not significant, only two, okay? If the zeros are leading, meaning they're to the left of a number, left of a number one to nine, none of those count. Those are not significant, okay? The other situation when they're not significant is if they're ending, they're on the right, and they're ending your number, but there's no decimal. If they're at the end of a number and there's no decimal in there, they don't count as significant digits. Are they important? These numbers will still be important, but not significant to the measurement, okay? So I want to make sure you've got your words right. Okay, so let's do this one. What do you know about left zeros? 
they're insignificant. Insignificant. So how many sig figs here? Three. Three. Perfect. You don't have to cross them out. I'm just going to cross them out so that you can see. Next person. How many in this one? Three. Three. Why didn't you count this one? Because it's to the left. Left don't count. Awesome. How about this one? Now these are to the right. Do those zeros count? No. Why not? No decimal. Awesome. So how many sig figs? Two. Two. Perfect. So those don't count because there's no decimal. If there were a decimal in there, they would count. Okay. Next one. How many? Next person. Sorry. So how many on this one do you think? Two. Two. Very good. Why? Because no there's no decimal. No decimal. Awesome. Next person. How many? Three. Perfect. Why are these significant? There is a decimal. Nice. Okay. So anywhere after the decimal, as long as they're at the end of your number, then they're going to count. Next person. This is a hard one. Three. Which ones are not significant? The ones on the left don't count. Left ones never count. Why does this one count? It's trapped. Good. The trapped ones count. Okay, next person. Okay, let's, since you're questioning, let's figure this out. Does this one count? Yes. Based on what his rule, what he just said, why was this one okay? Because it's trapped. If it's trapped between numbers one to nine, then it's significant. So that one's trapped. These are zeros at the end, and there's no decimal. So what would you say about those? They're not. So how many sig figs? Four. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, let's work out this one now. Four. Four. Very good. Which ones are not? The ones to the left. The ones to the left. These are because, again, why wouldn't the scientists, and what makes them significant, by the way? Decimal. Having a decimal. Very good. Because of the decimal, that even if the decimal is all the way there, that makes them significant. Okay. Because what would be the difference between saying this and just saying 0 0.00036? Well, the difference is they're telling you that they're estimating to that number. Okay, next one. 123. Um, yep, three. That's an easy one. Good, because they're all there's no zero in there. Zero is the only number in question. Okay, next one. Five. Five. Why are those significant? Because there's a decimal. There's a decimal. Next one. How many in this? Five. Five. Why are those okay? Because it's trapped. They're trapped. Very good. And last one on here. How many on this one? Five. Five. Very good. What makes those significant? Because there is a decimal, it makes them all significant. Okay, rounding. I know it seems really easy, and then we're done. Okay? I know it seems really easy, but it's not. Okay? When you round, the first thing is we're going to start at the left. And I'm going to use dots. Okay? And once I get first thing, uh, you know, if it's five and up, you round up. What if it's less than five? Right, right. Uh, don't change it. I, the reason why I don't like when people say round down is because all of a sudden people start over rounding, okay? Don't change it if, you're, if it's less than five. If it's five and up, you're gonna round up. Otherwise, keep it the same. Just cut your number off right there, okay? So, this is to two sig figs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to round it so that it's two sig figs. So, would a good answer be 0.0? .0? No. No. Why not? Zeros on the left. Don't count, they're insignificant. So that means that I need to start at the left and I'm gonna to come to my very first number that's not a zero. And here it is, and I'm gonna put a dot there. And what I'm gonna do is because I want it to two sig figs, I'm gonna show two dots. So I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna do this one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arrow. And this arrow is going to indicate to me, now most people don't do it this way, okay, this is how I teach it because I feel like it makes it easy for a lot of people. You can do it in your head. You don't have to do the dots or write it down, okay? But in the beginning it might help you. If this number is five or up, you're gonna round up. It's not, so what would your answer be? Point zero, zero, five, four, done. Okay, let's try the next one. So, um, in the front. Okay, so we're, we're gonna want three sig figs. So what do you think? Uh, two, two, six, point. point. Zero. Zero, awesome, here we go. Dot on there, dot on there, because it's a number one to nine. Now we need one more, so I'm going to put a dot there. You're going to look at this number to round. A zero is not going to round up, so you're going to just cut your number off right there. So again, 
If it's anything higher than a five, round up. Otherwise, just cut your number off, you're done. Does that make sense? Okay, let's do the next one. Two sig figs, okay? What do you think? Nine, nine. 99, awesome, very good. Here's one, here's a second one. I need to look at this number. What happens if it's a nine? <coughs> round up. By the way, what does a nine round up to? Not zero. Ten, thank you. Nine rounds up to ten, okay? So if nine's rounding up to ten, this actually becomes nine nine point zero, but don't don't include that one, so it's just ninety-nine. Okay? If you think money, it makes it really easy. Because if you had ninety-eight dollars and ninety cents, so if I put a dollar sign in front of this, it would be ninety-eight dollars and ninety cents. How would you round that to two digits? You would call it how many dollars? Ninety-nine dollars. Okay, if you needed to round it to two digits, two digits. All right, next one. So two point seven. Awesome. There's our first one. There's our second one. Look there. A six does round up, which is why she correctly said two point seven. Let's do the next one. This is the hardest one. Okay. If I write eight hundred and ninety-five point zero, how many sig figs is that? Well, based on what we did up here. It would be one, two, three. Does that one count? It has a decimal in it? Yes, yeah. yeah, so that would be four sig figs. So we're trying to get it down to one. This is the hardest one, okay? Which means I'm just gonna put one dot. One dot, okay? So none of the numbers after this number can count. Only that one. You're gonna look at this one. Do you round up? Yes or no? It's a nine. So if it's five and up, you're gonna round up. So what is this gonna round up to? Nine. What's wrong with saying nine? Let's talk money. Because I've done this with my kids, okay? Where I said, it said 895 and it said round it. And then I had, and you know, my kids have done this over time. And they said, well, doesn't 895 round up, doesn't that round up to nine? If you talk money and you had $895 and you tell me that you just rounded it to $9, you just lost a whole bunch of money, buddy, is what I tell my kids. What is 895 round to? 900. 900. It's 900, not nine. Is that one sig fig? Why? What's wrong with those zeros? No decimal. So I've had people say, could you include the decimal at the end? If you did, how many sig figs is that? Three. This would be four. This would be three. So that's actually incorrect. The only correct answer would be this. Which brings me to one quick little point. What if I actually wanted to make this the significant, the estimated digit? Okay? It's um, because then you have a problem, right? Because what happens if I said round 895 to two sig figs? What's wrong? There's, because if you round up like the nine, then it would be up to ten, so then you'd have to round up to eight, and then be nine hundred. It would still be nine hundred, but nine hundred only has one sig fig. So how can I make it two sig figs? There are two correct ways to do this. Two correct ways to do it. I could either put it in some type of different format. What do we call it? that we use in science, but not just in science and math, scientific. scientific notation. I could call this, now if I'm in a loop, I'm gonna go one, two, because now I have a number between one and nine to the left of my decimal. So this would be 9.0 times 10 to the second, two, positive two, because now I'm indicating that that zero was significant. There's another way of doing it. You can actually just put a bar over it, and now you've seen the bar before. When did you use a bar? to indicate at the end of a number, if it said like 2.6 and you put a bar over it, what does that mean? It's repeating, six, 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 right? Um, if you put a bar over it, it won't be at the end, it'll be in the middle so it looks different. That means that that's your estimated number because sometimes it just happens that that is my estimated number and it happens to be a zero, okay? So that does happen and they'll use a bar or a line or they'll just switch it into scientific notation. Okay, last one. Um, on this one, so we're back to, um, in the back there. So are these zero significant? No. No. So your answer would not be 0, 0.0. So what would your answer be? Maybe 0.057. 0.05, you're close. 
0 0.056. Oh, I know yeah. why you said yeah. 7. And I'm glad I did this. I did this on purpose, by the way. I use this one on purpose. Why did you say, and I want you to explain this, because... Eight rounds of four, so five and five rounds of six. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. Make sure you don't do that, though. That's double rounding. You don't want to double round. You want to make sure that you go, so I don't put a dot here. I don't put a dot here, because those are not significant. I'm going to start here. Dot, dot. I want two. Then I'm going to look here to round. Do not look two numbers past, only look one number past. So you would just say four, four keeps your number the same, cut your number off, which is point zero five six. Got it? Okay, and that's the end of the kitchen.